Welcome back to The Nose Plays Endless Space 2. So today, I've decided to do something a little bit different. Um, in the process of making my Horatio series and also doing some research and practice for my upcoming United Empire series, I have sort of stumbled down the rabbit hole of the resource we call manpower. And I just started digging and digging and digging and I uncovered a ton of information about this particular resource and how it's applied and utilized within the game. Uh, some of those resources came from other YouTubers like Forex Alchemist, SB, um, and many others that I watch on a regular basis. Uh, some of it came from reading guides on the G2G forums, which are the official forums for Amplitude and their games. Uh, if you haven't been there, you should check those out. And also just the Steam forums and Reddit and other places. So I've, I've gathered a lot of information about this particular topic of manpower, um, invasions, and um, how they're utilized. And so I wanted to kind of go through my understanding of what the nose knows about manpower. So we're going to start by just mousing over and what you're going to find in the Endless games uh, and in all of Amplitude's games is there's no single source for great information. Um, you don't have a Civipedia or a Tome of Wonders like you do in many other 4X games that basically have all of the information kind of in a, a single documented place that you can go through and, and read at your leisure. But what you do get are a variety of tool tips and tool tips are your best friend when you're playing these types of games. And taking the time to really read and pay attention to anything um, that you do happen to mouse over that gives you a tool tip is important to understanding it better. And so you're gonna find as I go through the different menus today that we're gonna be looking at a lot of tool tips. So you can see in the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the screen by mousing over the manpower uh, tracker up here in the top of the screen, uh, we get a nice little tooltip. And it basically tells you that your manpower is divided into three types of manpower. You have your global pool of manpower, which is basically your military capacity uh, for ground invasions and defense. Um, it also is used in ships to some extent, and we'll talk about that in detail as well. But this icon with three, uh, we'll just call them soldiers, is the uh, reserve pool or the universal pool of manpower, however you want to think of it. It's a separate reservoir of manpower that is not allocated to any specific location within the game, but it's a resource that you can draw from as you need it within your system. So this is pretty useful, and this can get quite large throughout the game. Uh, we're sitting at turn 72 in this particular game with Horatio, um, and we have this up to 2.6 thousand uh, manpower. And there is a cap, but that cap can be grown throughout the game through various types of technology, which we'll look at. Um, also, the rate at which you accrue manpower once you've used it up or depleted it can be increased through various technologies, and we'll look at that in detail as well. But this is the main thing that you need to understand. This resource allows you to defend against ground invasions and to wage your own ground invasions against other systems. Without this resource, you cannot do those two things. Um, the other thing that it does do is it does also provide a boost in damage to any ships that are stocked with manpower. And I don't know all of the details on how that works, but I'll show you what I do know and where that information comes from within the game. But let's focus primarily on this. Uh, manpower is broken down into three types as I pointed out before. The first type is indicated by this symbol with three soldiers. The second type of manpower is ship crew and that symbol you can see in the bottom uh, left of the screen is a single soldier with a ship next to it. Um, those 
are what are used for invasions on other systems. It's basically how you get your manpower to other places to attack them. Um, it's also used as a damage buff for your ships when you have um, a large quantity of, of manpower on a ship. It enhances the damage of that ship. The second or the third type are system defenses or um, your standing army on your systems. Uh, every system has a standing army and the, the default quantity for that army is quite small. You can increase the quantity of the troops that you have stationed on any particular system and particularly systems that are at the front of your empire, on the borders of your empire that may be likely to be invaded, um, you'll want to build some defensive structures that increase this quantity. And the reason for that is once a system gets engaged by the enemy, um, it reduces your ability to draw from this global pool to replenish units that get depleted. So you will be unable to draw more soldiers uh, from the global pool during an invasion. And so you're stuck with however many troops that you have stationed there as your standing army uh, until a couple of factors. Uh, there's a few things you can do to help increase that and we'll talk about that. But um, the larger that force is, the more likely you'll have time to respond uh, with a ship uh, response of your own or um, possibly even survive the invasion altogether. So it, it can be really useful. Um, let's go through the technology tree now and talk a little bit about this particular global pool of manpower. Uh, before we do that, let's take a peek over here. So you can see your empire manpower uh, is in uh, this military status screen and it will show you your current reserve and your reserve cap. You can see we're basically capped out at this point. We have the maximum number of um, standing military that we can have that's not currently deployed. These are undeployed troops, but they are able to be pulled at will to be deployed in a various different ways. So uh, we'll talk about those ways, but you can see uh, this is the rate at which our manpower will increase per turn and this number fluctuates depending on your food reserves in your systems and we'll talk about that. Um, this is the amount of manpower that is getting pulled from this pool into fleets that are being made or fleets that are being replenished or systems that are being replenished after a battle or after you've built a new structure that requires a larger cap on that system. Uh, you don't just get the, the manpower for free, you have to generate them. If you've already generated them in your global pool, you'll pull from that global pool and it'll automatically fill those systems up and, and we'll look at those types of improvements here in a moment. But this is an important piece of information uh, that tells you how much manpower you have, um, both in your global pool and how much is being pulled uh, for fleets or systems, your increase to this after all deductions are, are uh, determined. So this is a useful bit of information when looking at manpower. Another place where um, you can see your manpower is this uh, right over here. So if you come to the Empire Summary screen and you go to the Victory Conditions, you can actually see your total quantity of all manpower in your Empire. And so you can see uh, roughly half of our manpower is undeployed. Um, they're just in a global pool that we can draw from as we need. But there's a roughly another 2,000, 2,100 manpower that is either deployed in ground invasions currently, in ships, or on systems as system defenders, as a standing system defense. So this number is sometimes used in a few calculations within the game if you want to know how much manpower you have as an empire uh, because there's some interaction with your empire-wide manpower. Uh, this is where you would get that number. Okay, let's go ahead and move to the tech tree. And the manpower um, 
buildings are all going to be found in the military side of the tech tree. So one of the very first technologies that you have the ability to unlock is uh, this one right here. And this particular building and this particular action both interact with and affect your manpower. So let's talk about the building first. Uh, what this does is it provides 150 additional standing defensive forces for your system. Once this building is built, you have a larger capacity of manpower on that system defending it. That's important for any system that's likely to be invaded. Um, 150 manpower is, oh, about 30 infantry, I think, if I'm doing my math right. Um, and 30 infantry is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. So this will give you 30 additional infantry that you can deploy uh, in a defensive effort when your system is invaded. There's also another uh, thing, well, there's several things. Um, there are several other things that interact with your system manpower capacity. Um, there's a few buildings and a few abilities within the game. Uh, one of those buildings is a curiosity that you'll sometimes uncover. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's called the Sim something or other. And what it does is it provides manpower based on, or sorry, it provides industry based on the amount of manpower you have on your system for defense. So by increasing your system defense, you can actually increase your industry once you've built that building. Um, there's also another notable uh, interaction with this particular pool of manpower, and that is the vaulters, when they reach their 50 population bonus, their bonus is to provide you with uh, science based on the number of manpower they have in each system as a system defense. So for example, um, you get 10% of your uh, manpower as science. So if you had 300 manpower on a system, that would be 30 extra science that you would generate every turn. Uh, if you had 3,000 manpower on a system, that would be 300 extra science. So these buildings um, can provide you benefits above and beyond what you would get just from the system defense when you interact with certain other parts of the game. So that's important to know. Uh, this one, this one generates global manpower. And what it does is it converts a single unit of population into 300 manpower. That 300 manpower is deposited into this pool. So if this is capped out, um, then there's no need to really build more because you can't have more manpower than your current cap. Okay, uh, it basically takes 300 food away from your empire, which reduces um, your population by one, just as if you were starving because of some other interaction with a lack of food. So it's just a straight one time subtraction of 300 food for 300 manpower. Um, that's pretty significant. Remember, uh, 300 manpower is about 60 infantry units, which we'll talk about later, but that, that's a fair amount. The problem is, um, this has to be done somewhat preemptively. Um, you cannot use this so much in a reactionary way, um, especially when it comes to invasions of your system. Uh, you, these manpower in this pool do not get to participate in invasions. They do, however, get to replenish losses once a battle is won or, in some cases, lost. So that it's important to have this built up once you've finished uh, dealing with an invasion, whether it's you attacking someone else or someone else attacking you and losing. Any units that you lost will be replenished from this pool, but you will not actually have these units participating in the fight those specifically come from the units that are tagged with this other symbol with the soldier next to a planet. Those are the only ones that get to participate in the fight, uh, with one exception which we'll talk about when we get to combat tactics. So that's important. Um, the next 
technology that deals with manpower is actually in this chain here and when you complete either one of these you'll get this bonus and what this bonus does is it's a plus 200 cap to your empire capacity so again this bonus applies to this number up here it gives us a, an additional 200 to our manpower so this number increases by 200 once we've achieved this um, and again these unlock as soon as one or the other of these is completed it doesn't matter which one you complete um, you'll get that the next thing to look at is right here um, if you research this technology you gain this support module and what this support module does is it provides additional manpower to ships I'm a little disappointed that they don't show the icon like they do for um, these other ones but rest assured because it's a module that goes on a ship this extra 100 manpower will provide you 100 manpower on a ship so what does that mean well basically every ship has a base amount of manpower that they typically run with this extends that by 100 and allows you to have a ship provide more troops in a ground invasion so if you're trying to build a fleet to take over a pirate system or a neighboring enemy system one way to have a better odds of doing that is to load up a ship or several ships with these modules and give yourself much more manpower to drop onto the planet's surface to then take care of the defensive forces that are there okay moving on to the next tier and what you're gonna see is this icon actually is found at every one of these unlock stages and so we can actually increase the capacity of our empire quite significantly over time um, one of the things that I don't like about this icon is that it shows the wrong symbol here and I don't know why um, they show the ship symbol because this empire capacity is directly related to this pool it has nothing to do with the, the amount that you can actually put on a ship so that's a little bit frustrating but and maybe a little confusing um, but keep in mind that this icon in each one of these is actually increasing your global pool as you move up the chain um, this icon the little satellite dish uh, most people recognize it and you know it because of the plus three command points that it allows you on your fleet but the other thing that it does that's very important and we're going to dive into that a lot deeper when we get to combat tactics but it increases by 100 your manpower deployment limit on your empire so initially your manpower deployment limit I believe starts at 500 units that means that anytime there's a ground invasion at the very most you will only be able to use 500 manpower at a time if you have more than 500 manpower in any invasion force whether offensive or defensive at the beginning of the game the remaining leftovers will be held as reinforcements they will not actually participate in the battle that's important to know um, reinforcements will join the battle as troops get depleted to bring you back up to your 500 cap and there are a few interactions that will allow you to raise that cap by a percentage um, or it might even reduce your cap by a percentage depending on what types of tactics you use but your base cap at the beginning of the game is 500 once you research this your capacity to engage with a larger force is increased and so at this point my forces actually have the ability to engage with up to 600 troops at a time now I can engage with less than 600 troops if I want uh, or if I have to but the maximum amount of troops that I can engage with at any particular fight will be 600 if I fight a player 
who has not researched this yet, I could potentially have a hundred troop advantage over them, or a hundred manpower advantage over them, um, because I can deploy up to 600 manpower while they would still be stuck at only being able to deploy 500 maximum. So this really only matters when you have large groups, but you can potentially overwhelm your opponent with superior technology. Now there are a number of these throughout the tech tree, and every single one of these that increases your command points and allows you to put more ships in a single stack also increases your manpower deployment limit. By researching this tech in the future, I would increase my limit from 600 to 700. And there are several other ones further up the tree that I won't go over. Um, but each time you research one of these, you gain more deployment limit. And we'll talk about that again when we get to battle tactics, which we'll demonstrate shortly. So that's pretty much it for the tech tree. Um, there are a few other technologies that deal with um, manpower and infantry in particular. Um, this one increases the health and uh, of your troops and the damage of your troops on your empire. Um, there's a number of buildings. Let's see if I can. Uh, so there's a number of buildings that increase the defensive capacities of your ship, uh, not ships, of your planets. So this gives me an extra 250 um, manpower in service of defense against enemy invasions. It also reduces the possibility of having our structures destroyed during uh, an invasion. And here's another one. And this one in particular is very, very useful. And we'll talk about why this is, but this is my preferred of the two, if I'm going to use one of these two. Um, 750 damage done to attacker during the ground battle. Um, tractable armaments is very, very powerful at deterring enemy invasions and it will cause the enemy to take a lot of casualties. Um, it also increases the quantity of manpower in use of your defense of your system by 250, which is quite a bit. Um, let's see, is there anything else that I want to point out? Not really. I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so keep those things in mind. Um, these buildings increase system defenses only. These bonuses increase your pool of available manpower. And there's a few other things that we'll look at that uh, interact with those numbers. Um, let's go ahead and zoom out of here. And let's move back into here. And let's spend a little bit of time talking about ships. So ships also interact with the manpower and this is important um, a lot of players who are new to the game and are new to this idea of manpower which as far as I'm aware is a brand new system I've never seen this utilized in any other 4x style game but I think it's a very clever way of keeping people honest in terms of how they build their forces um, there's a real big logistics problem that has to be solved when you're dealing with invasions and you're dealing with taking on another player in a very aggressive and military faction a uh, fashion um, and if you're not careful you can you can really hurt yourself or slow yourself down or find yourself in a position where you're trying to make things but you don't have the ability to do it because you've used up your available pool of manpower so let's talk a little bit about ships. Um, the primary ship that you start with is your scout ship. These are civilian class ships. Um, you also have your colony ship, which is a civilian class ship. And both of these ships have a optional cost at the bottom of the card of zero to 40 global manpower. So what will happen is you will pull 40 units of manpower from this pool every time you build one of these ships. That 40 manpower can be used as an invasion force 
or as reinforcements for an invasion on one of your systems. So, for example, if you want to go attack a pirate system, you can fly the ship over to their system, click the invasion icon, and it will drop your 40 manpower onto the surface of the planet, and they will begin a combat sequence, which we'll look at shortly. However, um, if you're being attacked, if pirates are invading one of your systems, you can also fly this ship over to the um, battle and it will drop those 40 units onto the surface to be used as a defense of the system. So using your ships in both an offensive and defensive capacity is important. One of the things that I may have pointed out already, but when your ship uh, or when your system is under siege from an invasion, you cease to be able to interact with this pool of resources. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But back to ships, um, civilian class ships have a maximum manpower capacity of 40. However, they do have a number of support modules and you can increase this capacity significantly by adding that manpower cap module which will give them 100 per slot. There are also larger manpower modules which can give you 200, 300, or even more uh, manpower per slot. So those are pretty powerful. Another thing to keep in mind, and I don't have any currently in this game, but medium class ships can hold significantly more manpower. Um, medium class ships well, let's talk about Tier 1 military ships first. Uh, tier 1 military ships, so the attacker class and the protector class ships. Uh, both Tier 1 military ships have a optional cost of 0 to 100 manpower. So this 0 to 100 manpower means that you have more than double the amount of manpower per ship that you can drop on a planet for an invasion force. That's pretty good. Um, you can also put the modules uh, for more manpower in these ships and give you even more. But what I really want to point out is medium class ships, which I, again, I'm, I apologize for not having any of those right now. But a medium class ship, if I were to mouse over it, um, the manpower capacity for medium class ships is 300. It requires up to 300 manpower to fill out a medium ship. The other thing to keep in mind is that modules have an amplification when you place them on medium and large class ships. And so that manpower module that we were looking at before that puts 100 troops on a ship per slot, well, if you were to put that on a medium class ship, that would be magnified to 200. And so a coordinator class ship for example with a single manpower module would have up to 500 manpower that it could drop as an invasion force just that ship that doesn't include any escort ships that come along with it so that's an important resource to keep in mind um, and a great way to build an invasion force is to use the larger ships because they amplify the effects of manpower modules Another thing you can do that I've done, um, and you can see that here with this ship, is I've just made a basic um, Explorer class ship, but instead of putting probes and stuff on it, I fitted it out with a bunch of those manpower probes. So if I open this up, manpower modules, um, you can see I have a single engine to give me a reasonable speed of seven. And then I have three of these manpower modules. Now this ship is extremely vulnerable to any kind of attack from other players. Um, but what you can do with these ships is you can fly them to an enemy system, drop the manpower, and then immediately fly away. The manpower stays on the planet while the ship can go back to your safe systems, your friendly systems, and over time, we can replenish all of the manpower that we deployed and come back and drop another invasion if we need to. So this is one way to um, address the issue of 
getting enough manpower on an enemy system to actually carry the day. Drop what you have, go back, restock, come back, drop again, go back, restock, and just constantly do that over and over and over again, um, jumping from system to system. So building dedicated invasion ships are one way. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about this. So, I talked earlier about how manpower provides an offensive bonus to ships when you have it. Because it's an optional cost, if you run out of manpower, you could still build your ships without it, but you lose out on this bonus. So if I mouse over this uh, icon right down here on any one of my ships, it'll say basically the same thing. Um, the manpower of troops in this ship, uh, this is used for ground battles and will regenerate over time. It also gives you a damage bonus, plus 20% when full during space battles. So if your manpower is full, um, you get a 20% bonus to your damage while your manpower is full. What I don't know, and what is unclear from the text, uh, and I haven't been able to, to find out um, through anecdotal evidence yet, is if this 20% is an all or nothing, or if it's... Um, if it degrades slowly over time based on your total manpower percentage. So, you know, at 100% of my manpower, I start with 20% damage, and as I lose this, does it slowly degrade down to zero when I hit zero manpower, or is it straight up 20 when it's full, and then as soon as I lose any manpower, um, that, that bonus goes away. I'm not for sure. I've read in several places both accounts and I, I have not been able to verify either one. So if you know uh, please mention it in the comments and if you have a, a source that would be even better. Um, but it's something that needs to be investigated. The thing that you need to know is that having manpower on your ships is better than not and if you have manpower on your ships and your opponent does not you have a distinct damage advantage all other things being considered equal. So important. Okay, now that we've spent some time um, talking about ships, let's go ahead and talk about systems. I currently have a system that is under siege, and we're going to talk a little bit about combat tactics in a moment, but what I want to do is I want to point out some information right here. So this is my defense force. Um, it is currently at 100%, and if you look at my total quantity, I have 200 of 200. This is the base quantity of manpower for defense of a system. Um, I'm also currently losing 12 per turn, and we'll talk about where that number comes from in a moment. Um, you can see the breakdown of the types of units I have. So uh, I have zero infantry units and 13 tanks to defend this system currently. And we're currently being besieged. And this is an important thing to know. Whenever you blockade a system, um, the star system becomes under siege. Manpower is reduced over time until it is vulnerable for an invasion and systems under siege do not generate any strategic resources, luxury resources, or manpower. Um, we cannot grow and utilize any additional manpower from our global pool or any other resource except perhaps ships that fly over uh, and drop their manpower. Uh, but we don't get to generate and pull from this pool. We have to rely on what we have on hand, which is just the 200 currently. There's also a hefty penalty to dust, science, and influence. And so one thing you can do that's pretty important if your opponent have um, these massive influence bubbles that are breaching your own systems and you're worried about Pacific conversion, um, you can reduce the speed at which those bubbles grow by blockading an enemy system. Now, they're not going to like that, 
but you don't have to do anything else. You simply put a ship with any type of offensive weaponry on that system as a blockade, and the influence will greatly be reduced, which means that their influence bubble will grow much more slowly than it was prior. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but right now, this is all we have, 13 ships, and we're losing 12 per turn. Now, where does that 12 per turn come from? Well, if we go to Essa, we can see that we have some pirates. And these pirates are currently blockading my system. Now, the pirates have a total of six command points worth of ships in this stack and that six command points is where this number comes from. Uh, this number is always going to be double the number of command points that you have on a single system. So if you were to increase the number of uh, command points that you can field and then you were to field the maximum number of command points, this number gets reduced significantly. By stacking multiple fleets, you can make it even faster. And so if this guy had another fleet of six command points worth of ships that were to also park itself on this system, then this would actually go to 24 per turn that I would be losing. And so if you want to soften up the enemy before an invasion, uh, the best way to do that is to get the largest stack or multiple stacks of ships that you can. They don't even have to be particularly powerful. You just have to have the command points. And you park them and blockade their system, you will be reducing manpower every turn. Another way to greatly reduce the defenses of a system is through titanium slugs, which are a tier two module that require titanium to build but these titanium slugs will reduce manpower by an additional 15 per turn. And you can put several of these on a ship. Um, so they work similarly to how our invasion modules do. If, if I were to put, say, three of these on a uh, explorer ship, similarly to how I did with that invasion ship, I could actually remove 45 um, additional manpower from the enemy every turn plus whatever my command points are doubled. So if I had six command points doubled that would be 12 and then another 45 for a single one of those types of invasion ships. Uh, that's quite a bit and you can actually get that number quite high to where you're actually able to reduce the manpower quite efficiently down to basically zero within just a few turns. Another thing to keep in mind, um, putting these modules on the larger ships magnifies their effect. So again, putting this on a medium ship, a single module would reduce 30. And if you put it on a large ship, like a carrier class ship, it would reduce it by a multiple of four, which makes each one of these reducing manpower by up to 60 per turn. That does not include your command points. So the more command points you have, uh, be even more than that. And you can usually fit a ship with several of these. So keep that in mind. One way to deal with an invasion force. Now, these pirates are not actually invading my system. They're just blockading it. And they're going to sit here and reduce my defenses over time. Uh, if I were to be able to push this ship off with my own military ships, However many units I lost would then be recovered, and we would recover them from this pool of resources. So we would pull from this pool, and that pool would bring me back up to my cap. If this pool was empty, and we didn't have any manpower left in it, then I would slowly generate more manpower every turn, based on my food output in all my systems. And by default, when you are below your cap, all of your systems pull 10% of their food and create manpower with it. That 10% from every system gets pooled into this pool every turn until it's filled up. There are a handful of buildings in the tech tree, and they're over in the Empire Development section. 
that can increase that. Um, the first one is exotic rations and this is a building you can build in a system which will increase your defensive capacity by 200 so it'll give you another 200 defenders on the system but it will also increase 10 percent of all the food you make into manpower so every turn instead of pulling 10 percent of the food from that system and putting it into the global manpower pool it would pull 20 percent of it the other tech is right above it and this one uh, is just a flat effect of 20 percent to the manpower pool so this becomes really important um, if you're engaging in a lot of military conflict or you're setting up to be you're setting up for a big invasion or you're setting up for um, defending a big invasion this can be important and what you want to do is you want to put these types of buildings in the systems where you have the most food so wherever you've built the most food buildings um, is where you want to really focus on maybe putting these down they don't necessarily need to be in every single system um, but definitely the ones that are putting out the more food uh, are going to allow you to generate more manpower another building that's real important um, is this one and this one can be an incredibly powerful building at providing you with manpower so remember um, we can increase the amount of food on a single system with this by quite a margin um, 25 per system level means that we can get up to plus 100 food when we hit level 4 and then an additional 3 per population um, remember this only applies to your original population so in our case Horatio um, but on that system we're going to get three food uh, three extra food from every one of those population pips and if it's a fairly large system with 20 or 30 population slots um, that can be quite a bit quite a bit of food uh, we can we basically can get an extra 200 plus food from a system like that so building this in a system early to get you your population up and to get your food generation and then building one or both of these buildings in that same system can allow you to use up your manpower and then replenish it quite quickly remember um, when you're building large invasion forces you're pulling from this pool to fill your ships up and it takes a while for you to be able to fill this back up so the ability of you to wage constant invasions is directly related to your food output which generates manpower for this pool that you can then pull from um, if you have a high food output you're going to be able to keep this topped off much quicker and you're going to be able to recover from using conscription or um, chain gang program more regularly so every time you do this you can increase the amount of manpower you have so that your ships are fully stocked for an invasion but you lose man or you lose population pips and having a lot of food in a system will allow you to recover those population more quickly okay I think I've just about covered all of the basics um, now I want to spend some time talking about ground battles combat tactics how do you do it what do you do um, what's the best way to do it what's the best tactic to use and so we're gonna go through um, well not very many rounds of, of an invasion here but we're gonna go through some invasions um, the first thing to remember is when you deploy troops let's actually zoom out here and let's go to one of my fleets over here and see uh, do I have any fleets on a yes I do right here so when you have a ship on an enemy system 
um, you have the option of dropping an invasion force. Now, I believe this ship doesn't have any manpower on it. Um, all of my manpower has already been dropped, and this icon denotes there's already an invasion going on. In fact, this is the one we're actually watching here. Um, but this button allows you to execute a ground invasion of the system. Um, when you click this, all of the manpower from all of your fleets will drop onto the system. Now, I can't remember if I have multiple stacks, if only the manpower from the stack that I click this actually engages, but I think it's kind of an all or nothing. Um, so what's going to happen is all of my ships are going to drop all their manpower onto the surface of this planet. Um, they do not need to stay in orbit. My ships can fly away, and those troops can continue their ground assault without my ships being present. There is a downside to that, but it's not as severe as you might think. Um, the downside is, if for some reason I choose to retreat and I don't have any ships um, here for my troops to retreat to, or I don't have enough space on the ships for all of the troops to retreat to, they will retreat back to this pool. Now that's not horrible, but it does mean that I have to wait several turns to build more ships to put them on, or fly my ships back to friendly systems and wait as they slowly pull from this pool turn after turn to fill themselves back up. Um, it takes time to get them from this pool to ships, where if my ships are present and I retreat, there's no time delay. The, the troops immediately go from the ground forces to the ships and they can be used uh, to give the, me that 20% bonus in combat, or they can be used to go somewhere else and perform an invasion elsewhere. Um, that's particularly important after winning. Um, if you win a battle and you take over the system, your troops will go back to your ships if they are still present. If they're not present, again, your troops go back to this global pool, and if this global pool is already filled, then your troops basically get laid off and you, you, you lose them. So you need to have one of those two resources available to absorb your troops um, if you want to utilize them efficiently. But again, uh, one nice thing that you can do, for example, if we were to lose this battle, uh, we could fly a bunch of ships over here, restock our manpower, and then fly them back after a couple of turns and drop off more troops. And you can just ferry troops back and forth, coming to a friendly system, pulling from this pool, and then taking those troops back to the front lines. So it's an interesting system, and I kind of like it. Um, let's go back into the battle that we were looking at, and you can see I have composed my army completely of tanks, while the enemy is composed of both tanks and um, infantry units. Uh, this is an estimate of how many troops we might have to deal with. Um, this is how many troops are actually currently available. So they actually have one infantry and one tank left over from the previous fight, but they have the option of running a battle tactic, which I cannot see from this screen, called conscription. And what conscription does is it provides you with an additional 175 manpower at the cost of one population pip. Now you might remember that the chain gang program actually gives you 300 manpower per population pip, but that puts it into our global pool, not on the system itself as a defensive force. Um, conscripting as a defensive force um, gives you 175 manpower per population pip that you burn, but that population pip is gone, and once you get down to a certain number of population pips, you no longer have the ability to run conscription. 
uh, conscription can basically be run until you run out of population or you're down to your last population. Uh, but then you won't be able to utilize it anymore. 175 every turn um, is a lot, but it's not that much. And so you can't just rely on that to hold off an invasion, even if your population's quite large. Um, it's better to have designated troops on the ground um, from those buildings that we talked about earlier that provide system defense troops. Um, by stacking both conscription and system defenses, you can actually have quite a large defensive force and sustain losses much better than if you just rely on conscription every turn to give yourself enough troops to survive. Now you can see that there are two numbers here. This is the amount of manpower they have left on their system, and this is the deployment limit that they're allowed to engage with. So even though he has the option of engaging with up to 600 manpower worth of troops, he only has 20 of them available by conscripting he could have as much as 195 but he would have to choose that battle tactic and i don't really get to see what he chooses until after the fight's begun um, over here you can see that my deployment limit is also 600 so we're basically at the same place in the military tech tree and i have 90 troops worth of manpower that i've assigned now you might be asking yourself, if you have 90 manpower, how come it's only showing six tanks? And if he has 20 manpower, how come he's only showing one troop and one tank? That's a great question. And to answer that question, we're actually going to have to go back to the military screen and to the troop breakdown. So. Excuse me, a little sneeze there. Hopefully I caught the mute button before you got that in your ear. Um, manpower is a basic unit of military defense, but it does not actually... Com it's, a, it's a resource of military defense, but it's not the actual unit that participates in the battle. The unit that participates in the battle comes in three varieties, one of which you start with at the beginning of the game, which is your basic infantry squad. So each infantry squad costs five manpower. And so five manpower will provide you a single squad or unit of infantry that will have 60 health and will deal this basic amount of damage to the opponent. Um, you can pay strategic resources and dust to give those units some permanent buffs, and these are incredibly important if you plan on using them in ground invasions and you want to have an advantage, particularly when you're relatively even with the enemy. Um, you can see that the first bonus uh, you get for free, and that is 50% damage against air troops on Empire, which means that these units are pretty effective at taking out aircraft. This is kind of a rock, paper, scissor style system. And so this unit counters this unit to some extent. It's not a perfect counter, but it does better against it than other units will. Um, you can increase the health of this infantry unit by 20%. So this would go from 60 and actually it may be at default 50 and I'm at 60 because I've paid for this buff. I think that is the case. Um, and then we can increase the damage, plus infantry damage on Empire, uh, 20%. So these numbers are probably enhanced from what they were before. Uh, we can increase damage to air troops again, and then we can finally get another 20% bonus to health and 10% damage bonus. Um, these are incredibly expensive, but they can be worth it um, if you are engaging in lots of ground battles. The second type of unit you get is the armored unit, the tank unit. Um, it is substantially more resilient with 288 health. Um, 
it has more than four times the health of this unit. But it doesn't necessarily have more than four times the damage. The damage is actually closer to double. So we do double damage but four times the health. This is the interesting part. It costs 15 manpower to field a single tank. And so this comes back to why our current values are what they are. You might remember the enemy player had 20 manpower left. Five of it fielded one infantry unit and 15 of it fielded one tank. And that is why he's currently sitting at one infantry and one tank. Tanks have a unique advantage against infantry and so they increase their damage by about 50% when dealing it to infantry units. That's important to note. That makes tanks not only much healthier but much more efficient damage wise um, than infantry units when facing infantry units. So that's a good counter if your opponent is running all infantry or mostly infantry um, running tanks is the best way to defeat them with taking minimal casualties. Um, we've increased the health of our tanks by a margin and we could also increase the damage of our tanks, damage of our tanks against infantry even higher, and then health and damage once more. The final unit is the aircraft unit or the air support unit. Um, this unit has a pretty high health and a really really high damage um, significantly higher damage than anything else in the game but it costs 20 manpower to field one of these so for one jet for one fighter for one air support unit I could actually have four of these units if you think about that the damage between them isn't quite that different um, four of these units can deal at most just over a hundred points of damage but their damage spread is much lower um, they would deal something closer to 50 points of damage on a minimum. So the damage is similar from air units to um, infantry, manpower for manpower, but the health is not. Um, we would have close to the same amount of health as these, actually a little bit more total health than this unit would. So this unit isn't as useful against infantry and even less useful because the infantry provide um, damage bonuses to them but the one thing that these uh, units do well against are the tanks and so they because their damage is so high and because they get a damage bonus against tanks and tanks damage is relatively low without this bonus being applied um, these are very very good at countering heavily um, armored invasions so if you have an invasion force that has a lot of armor getting the air units and upgrading it a couple times can be uh, one way to counter them but remember air units are very easily countered by infantry units and so you have to be careful not to go too heavy on the air units now the other thing to remember is composition and we can change our composition by 10 percent each time we change it by 10 percent every 10 percent change cost us a small amount of manpower to do that so there's a modification cost of manpower so this resource gets spent just to change your units and if you don't have any manpower in that global pool right now we have a lot of it but if this were empty or near empty we may not be able to make these changes. Um, the change from one type to another, completely to completely switch from one type to another, is 250 manpower. So the at most, this is only ever going to cost 250. And you can change this on the fly, from fight to fight, uh, from invasion to invasion, from every turn. I can change this composition, and it immediately takes effect once I hit confirm. And so um, the battles that I engage in from that point on will distribute my manpower into these new types. Right now, because I'm mainly facing um, infantry and I don't have any air support, 
it makes the most sense to keep my army at 100% armor. Um, tank for tank, I'm even, and every infantry that he fields where I have a tank, I have an advantage. As soon as he starts to deploy some air units in his invasion forces or defenses, I'm going to want to consider adding some infantry back in to help counter the air. And if I want to take an advantage over his tanks and he starts getting very heavy on tanks, I might include some air units myself. But I would have to um, first take on um, that research, which I've not gotten to yet. Okay, back to the combat tactics. So now we know why the breakdown is what it is. These numbers are actually estimating if he took conscription, um, how many units would he get if he conscripted. So he could have as many as 19 um, infantry and 6 tanks if he runs conscription. <coughs> I have three options, and it can be hard to tell what the best option is. It would really depend on what you're trying to do and what your force looks like. So, let's talk about the first option. Preemptive bombing. Preemptive bombing says that your ship will bomb the fighting area before launching the battle. Um, this gives us some damage of uh, between 400 and 800 damage done to the defender on the ground before the fight begins. That's important to note. It doesn't really clarify that, but if you watch the uh, if you watch the engagement, you can see it happen. The bombs drop. A portion of the enemy is damaged or destroyed, and then the actual fight begins. Uh, we get an increased chance to destroy an improvement or to kill off the population, but we also have a smaller manpower deployment limit. It reduces our deployment limit by up to 25%. What does that mean and how does it affect our decision making? Well, what it means is that our deployment limit being 600 would be reduced by 25%. That means that at most we could deploy oh about 400 and 80 I think 450 uh, that's the most troops that we could use in an engagement that means that we would potentially have 450 troops engaging up to 600 troops but that 600 would be bombed with up to 800 damage so around 600 damage worth of uh, bombs would drop on them and we, they would lose up to 600 points worth of damage 600 points worth of damage if we're just talking about infantry um, 600 points of damage is about 10 infantry we could expect our bombs to wipe out but 600 points of damage against tanks is maybe only two tanks so if he's running a lot of tanks this bombing is going to be much less effective um, at actually giving us any kind of an advantage than just engaging with our full force this becomes more and more valuable as our deployment limits fall below the 600 and since we're severely below the 600 um, this means that we actually have a better chance of dealing more damage than if we didn't use this so if we're if our main goal is just to deal damage just to win the fight um, this is actually a really really good to use once you fall below your 25 percent deployment limit that means that anytime I have fewer than 450 troops engaging I'm actually going to get a free burst of damage at the beginning of the fight that will potentially remove damage that I would be taking because it'll kill units before I actually fight that's really important to remember um, anytime I'm over that 450 at this point and it changes based on this number because right now we're at 600 but remember this will increase to 700 once we move up the tech tree and it can get quite large um, 
when I have more troops than the 25% mark, then this becomes less useful. And the reason for that is the troops themselves will probably deal more than 400 to 800 damage. Probably. It depends on your troops and it depends on how much they've leveled up. Um, what your composition of troops are and what they're facing. But 25% of your, your army should deal more than 400 to 800 damage. And as you get into the later parts of the game, that is definitely going to be the case. Um, that 400 to 800 damage is pretty useful when you have small um, amounts of troops. But as these numbers get bigger and bigger and there's more and more troops engaging in battles, it becomes much less effective at actually reducing the oncoming damage. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're trying to take over a, a nice system, particularly a system that has something like wonders built in it, and you don't want to risk blowing up the wonders because you want to take them and use them for yourself, this is a very dangerous tactic to use because there becomes a much higher chance that you're going to accidentally destroy all the goodies you're trying to take from the enemy. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to this particular tactic. This is a really cool tactic for us and it's the one that I've been using the most. Um, this is the tactic that minimizes the risk of damaging any structures or removing additional population. It provides you a significant boost in health to your troops, but it reduces the amount of damage that your troops deal. Now, the nice thing about this is your troops have a much better chance of surviving each round. And any troops that take damage and survive are replenished to full health for the next fight. They don't maintain damage from from turn to turn so if I have a tank with an extra 33 percent health and it manages to survive the end of the engagement with one hit point the next time we fight it's gonna get its whole 288 health plus 33 percent again and so that's important to know um, things with more health benefit from this than things with less health the more health you have the more health you get from this percent bonus but it also means that you're going to reduce your damage more significantly in general because as you upgrade your troops you tend to have more damage and this is a percent reduction to damage so keep that in mind um, this one is really nice when you have um, a small number of very high health units that you want to prolong the fight for as long as possible um, or you're trying to minimize the losses to the system itself. I like using this tactic a lot when I have tanks that are upgraded with extra health. Um, just because you'll see that we just you don't lose any units. Um, it takes large, large forces before you start to actually see casualties to your units. <laughs> like, these guys may not even be able combined to do enough damage to kill a tank especially if they don't focus fire and I don't really know how targeting is is worked out in the combat but we'll watch it and you'll see all right the blitz when is the blitz useful well the blitz is really only useful when you are fighting with a force and you have a substantial amount of reinforcements your reinforcements are usually listed down here um, we don't have any reinforcements but what this does is it increases your manpower deployment limit to attack by 30 percent. What that means is we actually get 30 percent more of 600. So with a full force of 600 troops um, we would be allowed to deploy an additional 30 percent which is about 180 so 180, put me at about 780 troops that I could drop at one time. That would be the most that I could engage in with a single fight. Um, but if I don't have 
more than 600 troops. Or even really 780. If I don't have 780 troops, this is probably not the best tactic to be using. Um, because of the penalties that it provides. So the first thing is, if I don't have the, um, the, the excess of my deployment limit for the engagement, this big bonus of plus 30% manpower deployment limit is meaningless. My 90 troops are going to be 90 troops whether my limit is 600, 450, or 780. It's not going to change. But I am going to increase the chance of destroying um, improvements and killing off extra population. And I take this huge penalty of minus 25% health on my invading troops. My troops are more susceptible to dying, so I'm going to have greater casualties. However, all of my troops are going to deal an additional 10% damage to the enemy during the ground battle. So my damage is going to be amplified by a small amount, but my health is going to be really reduced. This is a bad tactic in most cases. Um, it's not the best or ideal tactic, but there are times when it is beneficial to use it, particularly if you're in a hurry to take over a system and you have an exceptionally large force with lots of reinforcements that you would like to participate in the battle to help it move along as quickly as possible. I would not typically use this unless you had your full 30% over your limit. So in this case, I would need to be pulling at least 800 manpower in invasion ships to even consider using this. Um, otherwise, the biggest advantage, which means, uh, which is the extra troops, uh, is not going to be utilized, but you're still going to be given the penalties of the health. So keep this in mind, this tactic is directly related to this number and whether you have the extra 30% above it. Um, and you're willing to use that. Um, normally I would use this tactic, but I'm actually going to use the preemptive bombing because I want to demonstrate something in the combat and then I want to go back to something I showed you guys earlier. And so we're going to watch this ground battle. I'm going to point out a few things and then we'll, we'll go back to the tech tree real quick. So, first thing you're going to see is the troops are going to enter the battlefield and we're going to use our preemptive bombing which is going to happen before the fight actually begins. You'll notice that the enemy is completely gone. The bombing actually wiped out everything that he deployed. And so my tanks didn't even engage. So preemptive bombing is really, really powerful against things with low health infantry and smaller numbers. When your units are deployed in much smaller numbers, the bombing has a much higher chance of actually killing off a significant portion of the enemy before you actually engage. That's really important and it's really powerful. However, the enemy has a counter to that and that is this building that we talked about earlier. Tractable armaments deals a significant amount of damage to your forces as they enter the battlefield. The damage that's dealt to your forces removes your troops before the fight actually begins. And you can see that this is 750 damage done to attacker during the ground battle. Um, this happens right away and it's a much larger number and more consistent number that you have to deal with every single turn. If you're not running tanks, you're going to lose a significant amount of your troops. Um, 750 damage to infantry is going to remove a lot of infantry, um, a bunch of them. And so you're going to have huge casualties up front before the fight even begins because of this tractable armaments. It's kind of like your your troops, it, the, the image of it kind of looks like your troops like walk through a minefield and they just kind of boom, 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 right when the bombs are dropping from preemptive strike or preemptive bombing. Um, this becomes even more dangerous when you use a tactic like preemptive bombing and you reduce the number of troops that you're engaging with. Um, it's less 
scary when you're using tanks because even if you dealt all of the damage to two, two or three tanks, you're only going to kill two or three tanks off, where you could kill a significantly larger portion of infantry off um, with this tactic or, or this building. So this building definitely take if you are planning on fighting off an invasion or you're worried about cravers or pirates or something else. Um, it will basically ensure that the enemy has to bring massive amounts of troops or they have to tech to tanks before they really become a threat to you. Okay. Um, I wanted to try and show you some of the defensive battle tactics. Um, but I don't really have a way of doing that. I can show you here that he chose protect the system and I can kind of tell you what the other ones do. But protect the system basically gives you 30% um, health to your troops and reduces the chance of losing population or system improvements, which is good. Um, but it's not all that effective. Um, if you can spare the population, conscription uh, conscripts 175 manpower worth of units into your uh, into fighting, and uh, that's interesting. He only fielded two infantry instead of a tank and one infantry. I'm not really sure why that was the case. Um, maybe I misunderstood what the numbers were showing. Maybe he only had two infantry and that was just showing what he was capable of uh, changing it to. I'm not sure. Either way, um, this, is, this is one of the three tactics that you get. The third tactic is tactical surrender, which isn't really a tactic at all. Um, it basically just removes um, the system from your control and gives it up to the other player, but it reduces the rate at which they gain control of the system, and it gives you an opportunity to mount a counterattack before the timer ticks all the way around, and then they completely take it over. So it gives you a chance to get it back, or a better chance to get it back or it just delays how long the opponent um, how long it takes the opponent to make the system useful to them um, war momentum has to do with politics and having a lot of war momentum can help you um, in making demands against other players or um, asking for systems or resources as payment for a truce but I think that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, I hope that this has been informational and uh, that it helps your play in the future um, when dealing with manpower, when dealing with invasions, and when dealing with the battle system. I really like the way that it's set up. Um, I think it's a really clever way of doing it. Um, it forces players to think ahead logistically and so I would highly recommend when you're building ships to keep an eye on this resource and to utilize things like the buildings that we talked about um, for generating more manpower when you need it or using the chain gang program to fill this pool up before you get your ships built so that you know that they're each going to be filled with the proper amount of manpower um, Tractable armaments is great in defense and making sure that you build some of those defensive building structures on your frontline systems just in case they get invaded by things like cravers or pirates. Um, those can go a long way towards preventing the enemy from having an easy field day with you. And then finally using things like the titanium slugs and large fleets, large command points worth of fleets to reduce the invasion capacity of your opponent 
reduce their resources like these pirates are doing in my system where they're preventing me from collecting my Hyperium and my Eden Incense and my Red Sang. I'm not collecting any of these right now. Um, and they're also reducing my influence, my science, and my dust by sitting here on my system. So, very annoying. Um, but yeah, use all these tips. Um, help improve your own game and let me know if I missed anything or if you have any additional comments, um, any additional thoughts, ideas in the comment section below. And with that in mind, uh, this has been The Nose Plays. Have a great day.